Hello, friend. Hello, sir. How We're are you? We're back again. I don't know why I did a little wink. I know. It's unsettling. Turned, it, turned into Anne Robinson. Doesn't make me feel any better no, than I already am. We're both in the wars again. <laughs> the mind's an ongoing thing. It's just going to be like an update, isn't it? The old bastards. So, maybe that's what we should do at the start of each each show, is is just log the Ball update up. on sort of out of ten, how we both feel physically. So well, out of ten, how'd you feel, Neil? Pretty shit today. Well, that's so, not out of ten. Okay. No, no, I'm just saying. I was going to follow it up pretty shit, so about a three. Oh. Three or a four today, because I'm so tired. I had a very broken sleep last night. So yeah, and yours is yours is your back, isn't it? It still is my back. It still is your back. Well, still... I'm, I, I was like, I'm going to be. I'm about a five, and it's my goddamn kidneys again. Ah, oh, bless you. So yeah, it's so just they... age is catching up with us. I think. Uh, I'll tell you, just because we look so youthful. Well, that's the thing. Our bodies are falling. What apart. I don't understand is in the what is it like eight months that I've been on keeping trying to get a bit fitter and yeah. all of this sort of stuff. I don't think I've been as ill <laughs> as physically. But then I thought about it over the last two years, two, three years, I've had like my knee. Yeah. I had, um, is it sepsis? Not sepsis. What is no, it? No. Um, um, yeah, you didn't have sepsis. What was it you had? Um, si- uh, si- I was gonna sinusitis say. or whatever it's called. That's in your nose, isn't it? Sinusitis. Uh, so what is it where my leg, my lower leg sort of, no, I know. Um, hang on, it's. Oh no, I, I, I know what you mean. Today, yeah. I had so I had that. I've had like three banks of things wrong with me with my kidneys. I've had a abscess. I've had um, a state of depression. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Go and get fit. You'll feel a lot better with <laughs> yeah, it. You'll, you'll, you'll just make yourself There's no feel. disrespect to, to Matt, my, my trainer. No, he's trainer. doing a great job. He's but maybe you're job, getting but... fit and it's pushing all those bad things out and getting rid of it. I don't think that's the case at all. So a bit like when you are you quit drugs and you go the cold turkey. Yeah. Maybe you're doing that. No. And everything's coming out. <laughs> well, I got told today that I may have to go. Well, I'm, I've got an appointment coming for a CT scan to see if it's a stone. Oh. Oh dear! So we'll have to wait and see. Um, I feel the sympathy. I still need my back checked, but I don't think there's a lot they can do. I no, ju- no, there's never much. It'll be physio. Do you think it'll be one of those things where it always, you'll go Ooh, like that, and all of a sudden it'll be okay. It'll yeah. click back into place. Well, I well, can have a go. We can maybe. Yeah, I'll lie on the floor and you walk over uh, me. Um, you wouldn't want that. I'll break your back. <laughs> <laughs> it probably might be more painful. Yeah. No, but less painful. Sorry. Less painful. Yeah. More before pain. we go, I got one thing that I've got. Before we go, before yeah, we start, that's it. Thank you very much, ladies I've got and one thing I've got to say. Yeah. Um, and I've got a thank thank my boss uh mike at work for this so i've been not feeling too good all day and um and he came uh and had a word with me um i think it was just before break or just at the end of break this afternoon um and told me that there's a banana splits movie yes now, I have saw you seen, a post. have you I've... seen the trailer for no it? i haven't i've only seen the post it's a horror film is it? It's a horror film. It's not one of these ones where somebody's taken the banana splits and made their own trailer and put music well, to it. Well, it's saying that it's it's no no no, it's a it's it's gone straight to like on demand and right. straight to digital and DVD and Blu-ray. And it is a horror film. But it's yeah, so it looks like it's it looks like from what I can make out on the trailer, it's a family are going to see this banana splits stage show. And then I'm assuming that the people that are inside the Banana Splits costumes start going on a murder spree. But it's called, but like, it's, it's either called The Banana Splits Movie or Banana Splits The Movie. But it's a horror film. I'm intrigued. And why a horror film, I wonder? Because I don't it's know. such a. Well, only what? for our generation, because you say it to like the Gen X and all of well, them. Yeah, I, not I, did, gonna... I did say it to, to Nikki, to Hello Mike, Hello Nikki. Um, who's a little bit younger than us. And when we said, oh, have you heard of the banana split? She said, oh, yeah, that's a dessert, isn't it? You have a banana. We went, yeah. I mean, mm. And Mike and I just looked at each other and went, yeah, too young. Too yeah, young. exactly. Because it was, it was the golden age of, of Saturday morning TV. It was. Na, 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 I always wanted their beach buggy. That's what was, was great about it. Yeah. And so I, I thought, when he said, oh, he said, Pav, have you seen this? Have you seen they've done a fucking horror film? Out of Banana Splits. And I said, you're joking. So I, I had to watch the trailer. So, so the poster doesn't even look like a horror. It was just the four of them up on a poster. 
Like, well, I, saw I mean, do you? It's like, come on then, let's have right a quick then, I suppose uh, we'll have to go because people keep... will be watching this or listening to this and thinking, "What are they talking about?" I mean, I'm assuming because it's um, uh, gone straight to to DVD or straight to you know straight to video or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, the Banana Splits movie. It's called. All right, let's see if we get this without any uh... interference or adverts. And it's on Sci-Fi Wire exclusive. So. So it's probably, yeah, so it's going to be a bit of a parody. Yeah, for horror, violence, and gore. La 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 la. Tra la 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 la. Sweetheart, we are going to the banana splits. <gasps> well, I didn't realize Sometimes banana splits night, still did no. show. see the splits riding around in the little cars, laughing and singing. Who's excited to see the banana splits? Yeah! Rebecca, I'm cancelling the show. What? Hi, <laughs> right, kids. Put on your ha- happiest faces because the Banana Split Show is about to begin. Where are the children? Mom, get out of here. Time's almost up. up Why are you doing this to me? The show can go on forever and ever and ever. Come on, you fuzzy son of a... I just really want your brother's birthday to be perfect. Well, that's really bizarre, isn't it? We're going to have so much fun. There you go. Well, that's really bizarre. Really if there was a, if there was a, a a children's TV thing that I thought oh yeah that's set for horror that wasn't it. no no Wurzel Gummidge you could have probably thought actually Although, talking about Wurzel yeah, Gummidge Mac- obviously Mackenzie Crook has brought that back and that looks quite he looks quite scary I know and he looks nothing like Wurzel Gummidge or a scarecrow he looks like something out of some weird Jim Henson thing yeah but I mean. That to me feel. I mean, like, like you say, kids are not going to think anything of it. No. I, I just think that's like sacrilege. It why, is. It's a really bizarre, weird. And why would they sell the rights to let them do a movie like that? I suppose they thought, oh well, we might as well just take the money and run. I suppose it's not. Well, I, I like I said, I didn't think they were still going anymore. Maybe not. Maybe only in America they're still going. Because it used to be you'd watch it, you'd have the skits with the the actual splits themselves, wouldn't you? And then you'd have a cartoon. You'd have like Land um, of the Giants or Arabian well. Nights, yeah, yeah. Or, or Three Musketeers. Were there Three Musketeers? Was that on that one? It could well have been. I remember the Arabian Nights, Land of the Giants, wasn't it? Was it Land of the Giants? I'm not sure. It was like one of those things where people have been miniaturised and then fighting giant ants and that. The cartoon version, not the TV series. Yeah, I used to really enjoy it. It was school holidays in the morning, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The banana splits. They're yeah. coming to we'll take us away, Barbara. So maybe they're um, they're going to now do like a snuff version of Why Don't You? <laughs> Bagpuss. <laughs> Bagpuss harder. Bag pussy. <laughs> Bag pussy, yeah. I always think, when you say that, I always think of um, Sean Connery saying, Bag push. Bag push. Back push here. Oh, back push. Mish Money Penny, let's go get back push. I thought you said Sean Connery. That's right, Mish Money Penny. <laughs> I told you to be Hugh Grant. That sounded there. more like your Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, no, a bit of Hugh Grant coming. Uh, 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 we would like to say thank you to all the people that have uh, have um, entered the competition so far. We'll leave it running for we a little bit. Yeah, we'll leave it running from. Uh, if you want to know what the competition is, Go and listen to the, the last sort of 20 minutes of last week's episode. Yeah, be warned, not safe for work. Not safe for work at all. Uh, but we've had some really, really good entries. Some funny so, far. Ones. so we will, we will uh, maybe in, in a couple of weeks' time, have a little 10, 15 minute sweary uh, part, of the, part po- of the podcast. Yeah. And we'll go through some of the. Uh, well, we'll read them all out. Some and of see the ones what people that we've say got. Yeah. We'll, we'll read them live out. But and come and, have a uh, yeah, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, talking about come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Did you see Mr. Bieber? Oh, uh, what with Tom Cruise? Now, I th- I thought it was a joke when I first saw it come up on something or other on online. And I thought, this got to be a joke. So I read it. It's a genuine tweet, wasn't it? Yeah. And it, I mean, he's retracted it and apologised now. 
But the first tweet was, I want to challenge Tom Cruise to a fight in the octagon. Tom, if you don't take this fight, you're scared and you will never live it down. Who is willing to put the fight, put on the fight? And I thought to myself, why Tom Cruise? And I've been looking and there's no, he's never had a beef with Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise has never done anything to him. Well, they were saying that, because what is he, 31 or is it 37 years older? 31, I think. 31. Well, 30 odd years older. Because another thing that happened on, I think it was on Twitter, is that people were going and saying, right, you need to find out who is 31 years older than you. Yeah. And see who you would then um, challenge to a fight. Be like 78 years old or so, 80 coming up for you. So, so, yeah, 31 years old would be, yeah. So, you, what you have to do is, so what would, what would if someone was born 80 years ago, what would that be? Um, uh, so, Come on, work it out. You're the magician. So, 39, wouldn't it? Is it? Yeah. So, famous people. Born, this is from your, yeah, your year. Born in 1939. 1939. Famous people born in 1939. Be like Surya McKellen. These are the people that I could... Um, Surya McKellen. Because he's just... I read about him celebrating his 80th. So the top ones I've got here, Tina Turner. Yeah, I think I could take Tina Turner. Oh, I don't know. If she put those stilettos and the way she walks out on stage. So. Marvin Gaye. No, I don't think I could I could beat him. I didn't even know Marvin Gaye was still alive. Well, no, but he was born in 1939. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't think he was still alive. So if I I fought him when he was before he died, no, I wouldn't. No, probably. yeah, Ian McKellen. Have... I think I could. I don't know. I, think I could he's grab got a... him by his really big old man ears and just, you know, he would. A None knee, shall pass. A, a knee up to the right, right into his nose and cave mm. his nose into his brain. That's what I do to Ian McKellen. It's like a celebrity death match. It is. Lee Majors. I wouldn't want to fight Lee Majors. You wouldn't He's win. He's the $6 million man. You wouldn't win. He's the full guy as well. Oh, my God. Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, I'd, I'd fight him. Yeah. I think I'd fight him. And John Cleese. I think he'd... I'd hit him in the balls with a silly walk. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you'd get close to him because he's so lanky and long. He'd ah, keep you at bay, wouldn't he? You see, but he is lanky and long. But that's the trouble. John Mr. Tickle Cleese. Yeah, so what would it, what would yours be then? So, seven, uh, 1942. 1942. Famous people born in 1942. So, <laughs> 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 the, the first one is someone that I think even you would be able to, to be, is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd, I'd go for that one. Uh, Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Oh, the painter. The painter. Oh, I wouldn't. That'd be. I'd feel mean, wouldn't you? I don't know, but I would love. I would love to see that you you pop him on the nose, his head flings back, and you realise that that big fluffy afro was a wig, and he's just bold as a coot. Or I do it against an, a blank canvas and put paint, and he, every uh, yeah. time I hit him, he hits. Hello, like, friend. <laughs> you like that, wouldn't he? Oh, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, you well, fucked on that I'm one. Fucked. Yeah, that's me. You fucked on that. Paul McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'd stick two thumbs up your nose. I think. I, I think I'd be all right with that one. Aretha Franklin. Ooh. So I, you shouldn't fight her because you have to give no. her respect. Hey, I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. Get it? I do get it. it. I do you get didn't it. Laugh though, did you? Fucker. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, that'd be a tough one, wouldn't it? Harrison Ford. Oh no, I'm fucked. I wouldn't be able to kill him, would I? You well, I'm not on about killing. I wouldn't be able to fight him. Fight him? No. Look at the way he took out the Nazis in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Exactly. Calvin Klein. Oh, I'd have a go at him. Have a go at him. You can have a go at him. Uh, Judge Judy. I'd lose that one. Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> uh, Barbara Streisand. Oh, that'd be a hard one. Oh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Oh, Billy Connolly. Oh, oh Willie Bum. Poof. And, um, well, of course, he's not very well man now, is he? So, Oh, Christ, Gaddafi. I wouldn't want to fight him. And Brian Wilson. Oh, Beach Boy. Beach Boy, Brian Wilson. 1942. Yeah, so you got quite a few. Oh, Tobin Bell. Is he 80? In, in... No, he's 76. No, but he'll be 80, like, in a few years' time. <laughs> well, all of them will be 80 yeah, no, in no, a no, few years' you know, time. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't realise he was even in his 70s. Who, Tobin Bell? He's yeah. 76. Yeah, well, you've told me that now, but wow, go. that surprised me. Lou Reed? I've got it in my head, they're 80, but I'm thinking they will be 81. Yeah. Yeah, well, they no, they wouldn't, would they? Anyway, so there you go. Lou Reed, take a walk on the wild side, man. You would. So I think you've got quite a few there that I think you'd be good at. You'd, you'd be able to beat. Quite so a lot of celebrities, isn't there? Born in 1942. Well, yeah. Mm. Anyway, so 
Tom Cruise would whip Justin Bieber's ass. Of course wouldn't he, he would. Oh man! But then I don't know because a Hollywood tough guy is he really a tough guy? I think Tom Cruise would be because a lot tough. of the stuff they do they're not doing for real. I know no, that Tom he, Cruise does yeah, a lot he, of his own stunts. He does, but he also does stunts in a very very controlled environment. He does, but he also is very keen on the choreography of fights and things like that, isn't he? Exactly, but a real fight is nothing like a choreography. But this is Justin Bieber. I think I could take Justin Bieber. Oh, where? If I farted on him, it would make him fall over. Then he'd be sorry. Get it? That's one of his songs. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, baby, baby. Okay. <laughs> it's turned into Paul Shane. <laughs> uh, well, baby, I'll tell you, baby. I will just play that bit now. Baby, baby. There you go. Yeah. You can have that on that bit. You can have that in, one on in us. real In real... Uh, Vic and Bob. So I was going to say, though, also, remember you do remember Celebrity Deathmatch, don't you? I do remember. Yeah, let's get it on! Yeah, I always find it really funny. Some I, the... They brought it, bringing it back. Uh, apparently so. Yeah. They've done some specials in between as well, haven't they? But who, not thinking of a real um, sort of match, like the Octagon Ultimate Fighting, between two celebrities, who would you like to see go hammer and tongs? Well, it depends. It depends. What what are we doing? We're not doing the celebrity death match because that's a little bit harsh. We don't want to kill anybody, do we? Uh, I don't know. Well, there's a few people that possibly, but let's not do that. Let's do a, a UFC like he did. He's um, Mr. Bieber said, put him in the octagon. Come on, who? What two celebs would you? I like would to like see? to see like a round robin event of all the James Bonds in their prime. Okay, that would be cool. So Roger Moore, Sean Connery, Timothy Dalton. George Lazenby. George Lazenby. And then uh, uh, Daniel Pierce Craig. Pierce Brosnan and T- Daniel Craig. So not in the age that they are now, or like like taking mm. them out of their box or whatever, but in their actual prime, because... Well, their versions of Bonds. Yeah. Who would win in the fight? Yeah. I, I think Roger Moore would go pretty quick. Yeah, he was never... He was always a karate chop man, wasn't he? He was, and it was... I mean, if you're looking at it in real world, it was never him doing no. the stunts. I mean, to be honest, it probably was all of them up until Daniel Craig. Well, that... Sean Connery used to do get involved in the fighting bit, didn't he? He didn't do, obviously, the main stunts. But, but... the fighting in those days were... Well, it was proper staged, you know, put them up yeah. sort of thing, wasn't and I, it? But I think it was always the Roger Moore one that you could tell definitely wasn't him. <laughs> and he'd do a kick, and it would never come past his waist. Yeah, it? Just yeah. Like, yeah. Although he's, he's probably my favourite James Bond. He's certainly done my favourite James Bond movie. Which one? Have a guess. Live and Let Die. Yeah. That's it's, my it's still, It still holds up really well now, that one. That is my favourite. And although, going back to the um, subject of last week's podcast, Nostalgia, mm. one of my favourite ever Christmas presents I ever got as a kid was a, a Moonraker James Bond like action man. <gasps> it was really. awesome. He had a full like space suit on. Did he have the little Roger Moore mole on his... I think he did. I think even one of his eyebrows was, like, cocked <laughs> really? up. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, it, I'm, 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 I'm sure I had one. Are you, do you know what I mean? It's one mm. of those weird things. It went along with the um, Steve Rogers... Not Steve Rogers. Steve Austin. Um, Bionic Man. Bionic toy. Man. And oh. you can... On eBay, They've people have got them for set. I've always wanted to, to buy one. I used to have a Bionic I Man. I loved that. When you had the the, the arm, the arm isn't it? The, you had the two arms. You would roll the skin up it. like it was a foreskin, yeah, and would have like bionics in it. You would look through his, his eye, eye, which you could never see through, which you probably. could never see through. And then if you tilted his head or you turned his head either to the left or the right, and then you put like a, a an engine in his arm and then cranked the That's thing at it. the back, at the back, wasn't it? But the best thing about him was that he had like a tracksuit on, didn't he? A red tracksuit, very cool. red tracksuit, yeah, uh, 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 training shoes. But he had socks. He had white oh, socks, yeah, which is one thing you never got with Action Man. No. Action Man, you just put the boots on his bare feet. And on the hands, you had that funny plastic thing that always came with an Action Man that we put over his realistic grip hand to be able to put him through the clothes better. Oh, my God, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But which that's... took me years to realise what was for. I used to think, that's a punkness. Why would he want a cup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they don't even do the, the, the rubber hands now, no. do they? Or the eagle eyes and stuff oh, like that. Oh, and the, the realistic scar. And, yeah. And, and the and the actual <clears throat> proper, like, 
crew cut hair. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to shave one of my action. I did as well. And it was just dark underneath. Oh, I shaved. I I had the sailor. Oh, hello, sailor. <laughs> was he with the crew? We had the, he had the beard. That's right. So I tried to shave his beard. And he, I ended up like shaving chunks out of his plastic face. <laughs> and he still he had bit clumps of like like bristles left, but he had like gouges out of his like. Oh, he yeah. ended up, I think he, he was the baddie in the end because he just looked. I mean, I used to get really in depth playing with those. Oh, me too. And I used to get, I had a red pen, like felt tip that was easy to wipe off. That when I, he was fighting the bad guys and he'd come out and he'd have a bleeding <laughs> nose and that, I'd put it on. I used to love with things like. Imagination. Um, uh, I would love it if my mum and dad bought like a big piece of electronic equipment and mm. there was, um, what's it called? The the polystyrene? Yeah, yeah. Because I'd start hollowing things out and so then that would be Hoth for my Star Wars figures. Right. Because yeah. they'd be all these intricate, intricate little like alleyways That's and stuff. That's right. So it could, be, it could be like an actual snow base. Yeah. And even now when I see... If I get something that's got, are like, you tempted? It, I, I, no, I just look at it and go, "Oh, that would have been an amazing little sort of section of the base, mm. that bit there." You know, and I always hate throwing away um, polystyrene. Oh, I used to, me and my brother used to play with our action men or other toys for hours outside because my dad was uh, built in the building trade, and in the the yard that was attached to the back of our house, his work yard, he had a massive like mud mound. And we used to play on that for yeah. hours. Oh, man, didn't we play on that for hours with all sorts of toys. Kids and that is, that, is now, that is now a thing of the past. Well, no, because kids, they don't have the imagination anymore. No. I see it in my own kids. Yeah. They just, everything's there. If they want it, they can do it. Or if you know what I mean, everything's laid out. So they just, oh, let's get a story. We'll Google it. No, make your own story up. And that's all gone. Although I will say my, my grandkids... Um, um, little Orlando will play with like pop figures and stuff like that, and you'll see him. Create. And, and it is something that is, although it, obviously the other side is that he will grab an iPad mm. and, and we'll instantly, be, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and we'll, but we'll be watching like Transformers or what's the one that he's into? What is it? The Power Rangers and stuff, right. which he loves at the moment. Yeah, but he still does it. One thing that really warmed my heart. Um, on Sunday when it was Father's Day. As we're recording this, it was Father's Day. And um, Tegan, my other, one of my other grandkids, I've got loads of grandkids, but one of my other, one of the grandkids was watching Dark Shadows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Johnny Depp film. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen it for ages. And she goes, she, we, we were sort of watching it with her. And uh, she said, oh, Bampy, this is my favourite bit. And all of a sudden, her, him and... Um, I forget her name. Eva Green. Eva Green. They start snogging and like is that when up they're against... bouncing around the walls? Yeah. <laughs> She's going. This is my favourite bit, and the bit is because of the destruction. Yeah, that yeah. was the favourite bit. So she finished watching that, and she was flicking through Netflix and uh, like the kids part yeah. of Netflix. And I and I said, Tegan, stop it on that film. Press play. Watch this and tell me what you think. And uh, it was Princess Bride. <gasps> And uh, our missus was sat watching it as well. And, and as we it started, she went, isn't this that film that's, like, really, really shit? I said, no. She goes, I always thought Princess Bride was that film that was so bad that it's good. I said, this film is a classic. Yeah. And after, like, half hour, she said, no, I think I was right. This is shit. I said, I can't believe you're saying this. Anyway, Tegan carried on watching it. And at the end of it, she just stopped it. Started it again and oh, watched it fantastic. again. And she said, Bampy, I love this film. I said, that's great. Yeah. Because I, I started off, I said, she said, what's it about? I said, it's just, it's like an adventure film. It's an adventure film, but it's got like some monsters in it and some scare. She seems to love scary stuff. Right. She loves watching like dark things. She's yeah. not one, like she was watching Mirror Mirror. Which was, oh, that's uh, the, which was the other Snow White Was that the one with, with Lily yeah, Collins? Collins and Julia Roberts. That's right. And... I didn't think it was particularly good. It didn't seem to have anything, but it's it did seem to be a little bit darker than your usual yeah, yeah. Disney. Although the original Disney Snow White is is dark well, in places. Yeah. We've, we've mentioned that before. We've on podcasts talked about it many times. Huntsman. The hunts, yeah. So it didn't. But she loves it. She loves that film, and I love the fact that she she doesn't like the usual Disney Frozen and all that. Yeah, sort of but thing. not just that. I mean, this is. The one thing I was going to try and talk about this week, which we might not have time for now, it might be a good way of going into a whole episode about it, is like things you really, not hate, because that's a really negative word, but things that really get on your nerves. Right. And one thing that I hate, and I know it's not for me, and I know it's not 
my demographic, but it is like those Disney sitcoms, do you want to call yeah. them, that they have on Disney Channel for kids? <clears throat> well, I was recording this, we did a podcast last night, and you were talking about Friends, which famously, I just can't get on with it. What was the other, Cheers and Frasier. Yeah. I didn't mind Cheers, because I think it was at the stage I was watching it when there wasn't a lot to choose from, so I did watch it and didn't mind it. But Frasier, I've never been interested in watching it no, at all. No. And even when they were saying last night when we were recording, oh, you must watch it, it's really good. I've got no inclination mm. of watching it. I'm sorry, Ross and Amy. No. But it ain't for but, me. But it's it's the, the Disney kids stuff that, mm. they, that they do that really, whether it's their movies that they do, whether it's their TV shows that they do, it's, I don't, like I say, they're not for me. They're no. not my demographic. But they're always samey. It's like all the, all the, and they always have to have people that sing, and, and, mm. and you know, and it's really hard to not get really for me <laughs> physically angry Gavin, about those Gavin. kind of things because they have, if if there's like a fat person in there or a nerdy, and they've always got glasses yeah. and they've always got like curly hair, that's it, and they're not the cool ones. They're the ones that will come in and they'll be really funny and stupid. And then you've got the people that are like, you have the cookie cutter family where there's the mum, mm. the dad, and two, maybe three kids, and they're all fucking perfect and they can all sing and dance. That's right. And, and, I, it, and their worry is young. that they can't get the right dress or, or something stupid or it gets spilt on or some comedy situation out of the most mundane. And you think, oh, come on, shake it up, get a bit of real life in well, it. Well, but then that's not that's not what. And again, I'm it's not gonna, Disney, and it's not I'm made not gonna, for us. I'm not going to knock Disney about anything because they create and are the custodians of some of the things that I love the most. Well, they so. are, and also we, you know, throughout the years they've made a lot of we love. It's only the TV, but then it's but like we said, it's not our it's, demographic. It's not for us, and, it? and like the grandkids. Love it, mm. and like my kids when they were younger, loved High School Musical, and which went into like Camp Rock was another one. I but remember they, that. they were all the same kinds of things. Mm. Whereas all these pretty boys that can all dance, and I, whenever I watch any of those things, whether it's the kids comedy programs, I always look at the extras that are in the background because you can all see that they overact so much. That, so they're sort of in their mind, they're going. Please notice me. There must mm -hmm. be somebody out here who's going to notice me because you know they're not talking to each other, but they are so over the top with their gesticulation that that they want someone to notice them. So they'll be nodding. Oh, oh, it's like this. a stage show. You see them doing it on stage, yeah, don't you? The it, extras. It, it's a real stagey thing that because they want to stand out. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I fucking hate it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that totally. Mm. We'll have to do a whole podcast on things I, I we think, hate. Yeah, think I think maybe that's a great three idea. or four things each that we absolutely hate. Absolutely. Oh, let me just shut that down. Right, we had some communication. So on a Wednesday, I usually put up on our Facebook page and share it around on the Twitter and all that for some communication. So this time we had from... Oh, where's it gone? Oh, I had it loaded up. Bloody idiots. One All, job. Already. Oh, yeah, but my phone switched itself off. There we are. So from the wonderful Stu Grant, who has promised he will come and join us on the, this very podcast soon. He'll be an interesting guest. We'll get, we'll stoke the hornet's nest with that one. Um, right, what's your take on the whole Me Too movement and the Weinstein and Company situation? Do you think some of it was overblown and has it had its day since nobody talks about it anymore? Including in this is Dan Schneider, Brian Singer, and the guy behind Rick and Morty, etc. I didn't know about the guy behind Rick and Morty. Um, who's that? Um, I'm not sure. Harmon, isn't it? Yeah, what's I didn't realise. Um, but well, th what's what's your views? <clears throat> well, my views on the Me Too movement is surely that's a positive. It should never have been in place anyway before, should it? Should it? You know, um, you know, they should never. Not only. Should it not have been happening, it should never... It's it's this whole men and women. It shouldn't be one thing for a man, one thing for a woman sort of thing. I've never understood it. It's a very much like race, isn't it? You don't look at somebody and see the colour of their skin. You you just look at it and see a person. And I can't get my head around people that objectify because it's a woman or the colour of their skin. Also with the Me Too, 
if we can get rid of any of that sort of nastiness, let's let's get rid of it. Uh, uh, so, by all means, I think it's still strong, isn't it? Still going on. I think. Well, yeah, because um, who was Cuba Gooding Jr. was charged just this week, as we're recording this. I was with, he? I didn't read that. With two counts of being like improper touching or something. Now so, I dare say, and I'm not saying I'm not going to paint every, or tar everybody with the same brush. I dare say there are minority of people out there that are using it for their own gain. Well, that's what's been happening for years and years and years. Of course, isn't it? it has. The casting couch was famous, mm. and the thing is, it was the fact that no women for decades thought that if they went to anybody and said this, you know, mm. Bill Cosby, the, the the one of the biggest stars in the world, America's dad, had, had been inappropriate with them, that they would have lost their job, that they wouldn't have been believed, that mm. all of this sort of stuff. So it needed some kind of movement, which was the Me Too movement, yeah. um, to make... The, now, it is that thing that in the 60s and 70s, it was the norm. It and was not saying it was right, but it's yeah, not, it was, well, it's no, not it's not right, right is it? it but, but it was, it was accepted. It was of its time. It's of its time, exactly. And the thing is now, arguably, you could say that it's gone 180 degrees. Yeah, 180 degrees the other way in the fact that now Joe Brand tells a joke. Yeah, about you know swapping. Um, well, a milkshake the, yeah. for battery acid that was thrown over oh Farage. All of a sudden, the police are called in. Well, that's mm. that's comedy. That's a joke. He's, yeah. She's not saying that as a matter of fact. Or she's, that people should do it. She's saying that as a joke on a comedy show. Yeah. That's where it then becomes the other side of it, where people can complain about absolutely anything mm. and expect their voice to be heard. The Me Too movement is something that very brave women have decided that that they're going to stick their head above the parapet and they don't give a shit what happens to them, and they're calling these guys out. Now, someone like Weinstein, I think if you talk to anybody in Hollywood over the last 15 years would say, I think it was a quote, wasn't it? Oh, well, that was just Harvey. Yeah. They would brush it off. They yeah. would say that that yeah, well, it's just it's just him being him. Doesn't make it right. No, absolutely not. Absolutely you know, not. Whereas, and it's like the women that have actually boasted about, or, or all the men have boasted about these sort of things to gain their career. You can't use one and then say you know you can't use it yourself and then say no, I was abused. Do you see what I mean? But they use their power. The mm. men, the men use their there. power to get their sexual kicks. From these women, mm. and no, no one I'm, more I'm so. Men. Well, no. Yeah, but no one more so than Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, but there are so many other stories. I mean, well, there's what, a lot of stories. I mean, you've got um, Dustin Hoffman's been through it now, and Kevin Spacey, famously, he, he's obviously. So uh, this is from Cartoon Brew, is the website uh, from. Uh, 14th of January 2018 is Rick and Morty co-creator Dan Harmon admits to sexual harassment and treating women like garbage. Right. Dan Harm- Harmon, the co-creator and executive producer of Adults from his current series Rick and Morty, has admitted to behaving impro- impro- bleh, inappropriately towards a woman on an early TV series and he created and produced in his own words. He treated her like garbage. This was on uh, Community. Right. Um... So, uh, Megan Gantz was the writer on Community uh, that Harmon harassed and is now a producer and writer on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Confronted Harmon on Twitter after he tweeted this on the last day of 2017. Um, this was truly the year of the asshole, myself included. We don't have to make 2018 the year of the mensch, but I hope it can be the year of the not as much of an asshole. Hashtag realistic goals. That was Dan Harmon. Um, but Megan Gantz then comes back with a couple of uh, couple of tweets. I mean, it's the thing is, you look at it from our personal point of view. Now you look at like the the people that we've had in here for different podcasts that we've done that, that we've done in you know the six years we've been doing podcasts. We get very, we all get very racy with what we say, yeah, don't we? And I think we're very lucky that we've we've worked with women that are. 
just and, as minded, just as well, just as filthy as mm. as us. There is every bit of a chance that there's one thing you could say to any of those women. And they could turn on a dime and say, I don't find that appropriate. Mm. And, I mean, I know it's not in the same scale for us because we're not in the same scale as people like Dan Harmon or any of no, these, no, these stars, not. but they could turn around and say that is totally inappropriate. As, uh, we're very huggy people. We're very huggy people. You know, so when we meet somebody, we give them a hug and hello. How long before that becomes an well, I think it's I think it's a thing now that you have to read the situation mm. sort of... At the time, because you, I mean, you don't know, you no, don't you, know you don't. who it is. You know, you, we, we could have a podcast with uh, a, a lady or a woman in here that we think is going really, really well. And you go to give them a hug and they could turn around and go, what are you doing? Yeah, they could. But it's not, it's, it, but then, like I say, at the same time, you go the other way mm. and things are so PC now. Well, you have got that side of it. But as long as the movement is still there and creating the good that people aren't afraid to come forward and report the things, as long as as it's long a, as it's, it's true. A double, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, you are on a double-edged sword. So we, we, you encourage the people to come forward, but they these people need to have morals themselves, don't they? And come forward about it if it's actually true rather than... And, and, and again, I'm not tarring people, all people with the same brush. It's horrific crimes have happened. But then you also have the people that are just in it to make a quick buck. Well, and... look at look at um, what Chris Hardwick had to go through. Mm. Uh, the um, ex of Nerdist. He's That's not right. Nerdist anymore. Um, well, the Talking Dead. The Talking you... Dead. Um, his ex girlfriend said that he was abusing her and all this. He got he he literally had all of his TV shows taken off, taken off of him, mm. and. You don't. I mean, you don't hear much from him anymore. No. Well, years. Everything ago. was. Exo- I mean, he was exonerated from it all. It was all. I think proved that she was pretty much lying about everything that he wasn't. That Craig Charles the same sort of situation. He was accused of rape, wasn't he? I don't know. Do remember, was, was it? And he he didn't do it, but he was accused, and it, he said it ruined his TV career for yeah. ages. He couldn't get a job. But then you, you're gonna you're gonna think that. You're going to think that about mm. about all these people, you know. It it's absolutely right when it when I mean it's, and this is going to go on to something else that I was going to talk about, because it's there in it's these people's entitlement what they that they feel. Um, Cosby, yeah, he's he's in prison, and I know that I think his wife also tweets on her account on his account. Um, OJ, yeah, well there you go. Have you seen? I mean, I, I it's, don't follow. It's twenty five years. It was literally twenty five years to the day of um, the O.J. Simpson or the murder, the actual murder uh, of uh, of uh, Nicole Simpson Brown and Ron Goldman, mm. uh, and he decides to announce that he's going to go on Twitter. Did you see that? No. Did you not see that? I'm watching. I'm like looking at you and it waiting is to hear this. Unbelievable. So he made he made a, a little minute video. Uh, basically saying that there are loads of fake O.J. Simpson um, Twitter accounts out there. Why there would be fake ones, I don't know. Um, so he, it's his is going to be, he's going to do his own, because uh, he, he's got some scores to settle. He needs to get even. I thought, you arrogant fucker. Yeah. Um, I've been listening to a really interesting docu- um, uh, podcast, sort of documentary podcast, uh, done by the sister of um, Ron Goldman. And it is fascinating. She's getting to talk to all the people that were involved, you know, Marsha Clark and all I these people. I never watched the TV series that they did of it. What, with uh, Cuba uh, yeah. Jr.? It's really good. It is very it's good. It's really good, yeah, yeah. I didn't watch it. I mean, we all watched it when it was live on the telly, didn't we? Well, I mean... Not so much live here, but... It's... it's. I can I can remember, because they used to have, on a Sunday night, they used to have, like, the, the, the best of, if you want, the, the highlights of the trial mm. every Sunday. So, I mean, if it had been now it would have been broadcast live. You know, the whole yeah. thing would have been broadcast live in this country because I think it was broadcast live in America. It was broadcast yeah. live, yeah. But then on a Sunday, we used to get... Get the bits, like the, wasn't the, it? The, yeah, like a match of the day of the of the thing. And I was fascinated mm. with it. I was absolutely fascinated because I didn't know OJ Simpson from a, being a footballer. I knew him from the naked gun. It, likewise. And it, Capricorn one, was it? Something like that. Yeah, he was something in that, like that as well, so wasn't that he? Was, that was why I knew OJ Simpson. 
And I was a little bit like everybody else. I was like, oh, no, I'm, I, oh, he couldn't have done it. He couldn't have done it. And the, I mean, it's iconic now. It's iconic. The famous him trying on the gloves mm. and them not fitting and stuff like that. I, I urge anybody. It's called, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. But just put, if you just put in OJ Simpson in like your podcast app, and it'll just, and it's, it's, it's by, up. yeah, it's by Kim Goldman. Um, oh, and okay. fair play to her. I mean, she, I mean, again, also, if you're going to go on Twitter, go on to, I think it's at Kim A. Goldman, I think. Um, follow her. Don't follow OJ. No. Uh, but in four days, he had like 750,000 well, so followers. Well, it's the um, sort of the, 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 what is it, the morbid curiosity, isn't it? It's that the fact that. It's like when you it's the car crash sort of thing where you but you what, go past it and you're going to have a look. What are they? What anybody that's going to follow him? What are they expecting him to do? To I, I don't around, know. To but... Turn around and go, yeah, yeah, I I killed them. I killed them. He's not. No, of course he's so, not. But they're they're just interested in what he's up to, aren't they? But why? It's why like... give a double murderer that kind of time? But exactly. But also, why do the people do this? It's the same with when Tem- Ted Bundy was in prison and a lot of these serial killers they start getting fan mail and a lot of it. I don't I, get I, it. I, I, I don't get it. No, I don't get it. But there are. That's obviously. It's well. It's not obviously. Well, it is obviously. It is a thing. People do do that. I don't get it. <coughs> I don't get it. And I don't. And I like I say. I mean, maybe it's mo- uh, morbid curiosity in the fact that I I, I find the whole case mm. fascinating and one hundred percent he did it. One hundred percent. When those pictures were released of the crime scene, yeah, it just shocked me. Yeah, and yeah, your brother showed me those really, and said, "Have you seen it?" And I said, "No, I've not really." And then he showed me, and I was, I was literally my jaw dropped. It's, it's, it. I mean, I, I <laughs> even now I find it like I, I mean, I, again, I'm fascinated with the whole case mm. because of all of the. All of the facts of the case, how he managed to get off of it, is mind-boggling. Well, it wasn't him, was it? Those solicitors did. Uh, the oh, dream, it's he crazy. had the dream team. He had the of course dream he team. Did. Yeah, was, that, that, that did. Was that the Kardashian? Wasn't it? With yeah. that one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because the one thing he did put out on the start of uh, this well, this week was to deny that he is Khloe Kardashian's dad, because there was a rumour that he, because obviously he was friends with Robert Kardashian, yeah. which is Chris Jenner's uh, ex-husband. Well, not ex, but they, he died. I get confused, do so you? Yeah, so she's the mother of Kim and all that. So Chris Jen, Chris Jenner's the mother? Yeah. So, so which was, was the she, one who had the sex change? That's, um, well, she's Caitlyn Jenner. It was Bruce Jenner, wasn't it? And that was, uh, right, okay. So she was married to Kardashian. So she, Chris Kardashian. Right. Then he died, and then she married Bruce Jenner. So she became oh, Chris Jenner. Oh, he died. What the solicitor guy, the lawyer from? Yeah. The, oh, I didn't know. The he one died. that was played by Ross right. from Friends. I haven't seen that yet. I'm, it's oh, on right. my to watch. Thought, right, no, no, okay. no. I need to watch it. Yeah. Um, and the rumor was that O.J. Simpson and Chris Jenner had a thing, oh, right. and that Khloe Kardashian was. Yes. His, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, isn't it? It's like listening to the National Enquirer. Well, because there was there was a rumor that somebody was speaking to OJ, and Chris Jenner came up and he made some comment about, "Oh yeah, I broke her because <laughs> he shagged her so oh, hard." Right. Oh, but yeah, so I mean, he's just he doesn't seem to be a nice person. You know, and that's the thing that gets me. It just but, absolutely gets me. Back to what Stuart said. No, I don't think it's overblown. I really don't. No, and me too. No, but I do think that, and you, you can't, you can't say things like I don't believe that woman because no, you can't because a any woman that comes up and and sticks their head above the parapet are very brave. Yeah. You can't say you don't believe them because, you know, it's that thing that you, you just can't shout that out. Because well, there might be some people that are, ta- you know, trying to make a quick buck yeah. or trying to get someone's career down the toilet like that, that g- g- woman mm. did with Chris Hardwick. But it, it, it's that fine but, line. I mean, while it's, it's not condoning or anything like that, is it? It's just 
the the thing I was going to say is like when somebody makes an accusation like that, the person who's the victim or the accuser should shouldn't unless the the victim chooses to speak out and name themselves, the accuser shouldn't be the accused. Sorry, shouldn't be named. No, until proven. I think it should be a reveal if they're proven to be guilty. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Because it's, it's, straight away, if somebody accuses a person, and I don't get this because we were always taught to believe innocent until proven guilty. So as soon as they're accused, their name's everywhere. Well, that's, that's again, that's modern day, isn't but it? But it seems to be, yeah, but it also seems to be on, like, news networks and things like that. And I'm always thinking, well, why are they being named? Because their career's over... And if they're innocent, their career's still over a lot of the time, and it takes a lot of work to build that back up. That's the only thing I think should happen. Yeah. You know, I'm, But I don't think you'll get that. Because you're not going to get because, it because, because of the day we're in, of the social media and 24-hour news. And somebody, hour somebody news. will leak it. It doesn't matter. The John Leslie thing. Yeah. Matthew Wright, wouldn't it? Yeah. Leaked it. Yeah, but then that wasn't even in... That was before social media. Yeah, I know, but I mean, yeah, that, that was, was bit... just that, that. That was just somebody that knew it that decided to shout it out all over the TV. Well, he accidentally said it in the end of the accidentally in air quotes. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's those sort of things. And while I I understand why people are like the paedophile hunters things that go around, I understand why they're trying to do it. But when I look at it, it I don't think, well done, you've caught somebody. I look at it and think you're doing that for views. Well, see, that's... Because that, to again, me, if you were to do that sort of thing and you're filming it, I find that give all your information over to the police and be done with it. You don't need to stand and film that person, however bad they are, for so long. Yeah, but then don't you think that that, that is some kind of deterrent for people that are maybe watching YouTube and thinking, well, I'm not going to go and do that? Well, because you then you're be face... doing that anyway. Well, no, yeah. but, but what I'm saying is it's an extra thing. Mm. There, there's part of me that is glad that there are people out there doing it. But I don't... I, what I don't like is the mob mentality. I don't like No, that. no, but... You know, because you're... You're degrading... You're, you're losing your argument by being as... To me, you just... If you're out there saying, I'm going to go and kill that person, well, it's a bit harsh, isn't it? Uh, even though what he's done, I understand the anger. I don't know, but I don't, I don't like know. the mob. If it, if I'm not. Was, I'm not defending any sort of. If it what was your doing. kid or someone, no, you'd be the first one that would want to go out and kill somebody. I agree. Right. I agree, but I don't get the urge to go and kill that person because I've watched it on I don't know whatever documentary or whatever. Do you see what I mean? Or or, or on the live. I don't know. I don't, I, I... I'm not a fan of that mob mentality. It's never been me. You know, it's like you get into debates with people about the death penalty. I'm not a death penalty person. I, I don't support the death penalty. I don't. I can't get my head around it. I'm not an eye. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I can see what you mean. I mm. just, I'm, it's one of those things where. I admire what the, the, they're doing, the hunters, but I don't like the fact that they just continuously film it and then share it and get people to share it and share it and share it. Send all that information to the police. Well, they don't, do. They, of course they do, but they're they also do. sharing it as well, aren't they? But I don't, I don't think they're like doing it on the Monday and then sharing it out on the Tuesday. I think they, they do wait a while so that the police have, have got that information. I, um, because I would assume that that kind of stuff can be used as evidence, and if they broadcast it sort of before it goes to trial as such, it could maybe... I mean, it influence... but you've, when they get to the thing, the police are then turning up. They then say, we have to stop filming because it'll we can't film when the police get here. Yeah. So they've got a law around it, I think, that they're filming before the police actually turn up and do their business. I don't know. I but just... I also think maybe they're filming it. They, they have to film it for their own protection because otherwise... I haven't got a problem with them filming it even. It's that sharing it out and in, almost, to me, it feels like almost encouraging that mob mentality, you know, pitchforks and flames, let's go and get them. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not. I, I, don't I can't I, get I, my head around. I I I, f I feel happier thinking that there are people out there that are that are doing that as their job. I mean, I know that it's something that the police should be doing, but the police are out there doing, you know, having to do everything, mm. and there's not as many police there as there should be because the government are cutting the police. That sort of thing. When you think, right, okay, there's somebody there that is doing something that is 
it's a citizen's arrest, isn't it? Yeah. That they're doing. But there's... I I wouldn't be happy if there's one guy going around doing it. There has to be four or five, because if the, the guy there facing off decides to go fucking mental... Um, but like I said, I haven't got a problem with the guys doing it, and fair play to them getting those guys. It's that... It's the 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 mentality of just sharing it and keep sharing it on Facebook. I don't know. Share it once he's prosecuted. I, I'm not even sure of that makes me comfortable. Okay. I don't. I, I hate the fact that that's going on, and I really they should be thrown and thrown under the bus with the law. Every part of it. Stop it. I just don't like that mentality. The mob mentality. I have never been a fan of. You know when you read about people that. Um, somebody's accused them of being a paedophile. It happened up north, didn't it, when it came right through to the forefront, especially when Chris Morris brought his um, brass eye out about it. But the, you know, they were accused of being that, and well, then suddenly the mob, were, they it's spray-painted the car, the that, house, and then they're... That's the problem, is when they accuse somebody that is not true. Mm. That is when it's... They, they've got to be careful, and that's, that's the problem. Yeah. I mean, if they're banged... Like a cockney fair bang to rights, then I actually I would applaud them mm. because it's one less scumbag that isn't going to mess about with kids. And yeah, and that side of it, fine. I just I'm not so sure about the social media sharing of it. Well, I mean, do it and give your stuff to the police and do it that way because they're obviously giving it to the stuff to the police anyway. But um, you know, maybe and they... if people say, "Oh, I want to know about that." that offender in the area there's a bloody list online you can read it tells you where they are what the you know and who they are yeah, and what the they people do. that they're 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 getting hold of may not necessarily be on this offenders list mm. well that's true it's 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 a mute point but, yeah, it is. you know it's it's one of those things like um you know the death penalty that there's so many mm. people there's pros and cons for everything you know it's it's one of those age old arguments. Yeah, that, well, there you go. You found out a bit about my politics. I don't yeah. agree with the politics. Death politics. Politics. Oh, I'm here all week. Okay, we had. Oh, um, we did have another bit. Of yeah, correspondence. from Judy sent us an email. Hello, Judy. Thank uh, you very much. Said, for topic in touch. to talk about. What is your thoughts on cheating? And uh, what do you class as cheating? Male perspective. Love listening to you, guard, guards. Love listening to you guys. Regards, Judy. And she also gave us a uh, film name uh, which for, the we were, we, for the competition. So, uh, so they mean so if you're. I'm from, assuming uh, she's not talking about cheating on board games. No. And, uh, well, yeah. I would imagine if you're in a relationship and you're cheating on somebody, what's my view on it? It's shit, isn't it? If you're the one I cheated mean, on. But yeah. What what do you if you if you're in an if you're in an unhappy relationship, which happens a lot of the time, do you it's what do you stick or twist? Do you know what I mean? Do you it's do you bite to... the bullet and you know it, it it I think it's subjective because it depends on what circumstance exactly. you're on and circumstance you're in. I mean, if it's if it's where you're in a, a relationship, an, an unhappy relationship, an unhappy relationship. It, even then, is it right? Mm. I don't know. From a male perspective, it's a it's a it's a tough one. It's, it's... Is it any different to a female perspective? Do females not cheat the same? Do I? I mean, maybe they're asking the wrong person. I don't. I don't know because I was. I've always said I think it's if you're talking just pure and simply about sex a in man, cheating, yeah. it's easier. This might sound really sexist. I don't know, but I've always said I think it's. I've always said that if there's a man and a woman, not together, but separately, getting ready to go out on a Saturday night, right, and the man says, I'm going to get some sex tonight, and the woman says, I'm going to get some sex tonight, the woman 100% is going to get sex yeah. to, on the night. That's the no, man, yeah. maybe if he's lucky. Is that sexist? I don't know whether that's sexist. No, I, I think just that's think quite that true. Because... When it comes to that, women have the power, because they've only got us. If they want to have sex, then they all they've got to do is say yes. Uh, that that's probably sounds. I mean, in the, I don't in the, think in it the is PC sexy. days, it, you feel like that that saying that is like a, is a wrong thing. I don't think it is sexist. I don't. I, I don't. But, and it, I'm not. I'm, what I'm saying is that for a woman, it she would have to depend on on you know 
getting to be like one o'clock in the morning thinking, oh, well, I'll just have him, mm. you know, because there will be somebody that will say yes. That's not necessarily the case for men. Men could will quite easily be going home alone because yeah, that's just how it is. Is that sexist? I don't. I don't think it is. Apologies if people think that is sexist. I, I know what you mean. I, I it's not women, come over as sexist to me. It, women it shows, have the power. They have empowerment. Yeah, on they that have side. the power. Of course they do. They they know that if they they can. So so is it easier for a woman to cheat than a man? Again, I don't know because if if a woman is in a loveless relationship or maybe a not physical relationship or isn't getting what she wants from a relationship mm. she could quite easily it's it's weird it's it's a weird way of i mean i've i've said this before to people chatting and it's never felt to me like it's un pc no no or, or or sexist whereas today since of what we've been talking about well, it's all it linking feels on. it feels I like it's it's I'm being sexist. I don't, no way it hasn't come across sexist. as sexist to me, but because no. I know what you mean. In no way am I trying to be sexist. I'm no. trying to answer Judy's question. But from it's... a male perspective, I mean, <clears throat> you know, in an ideal world, if if anything like that was going to happen, you tell your partner first that you're leaving them or whatever, and you, you know, but then if you say I've met somebody else, you've automatically cheated, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, what? And again, what would you class as and, cheating? And do you, yeah, and do you meet somebody and then end up falling in love with them, which obviously happens? Yeah, with somebody else, you don't. In an ideal world, you never want to hurt another person, do you? Feelings or, or you know, at all, whether it be male, female, or whatever, you really don't want to hurt that other person. But you can't help your emotions and feelings. So if, is it cheating that you meet somebody and fall in love with them? Does that what they mean? That to me is cheating. Yeah. Because you've fallen in love with the person that you're not supposed to be with. Yeah. And I mean, the other thing is that, that I mean, I think we're both a, a couple of flirts when you, yeah. really, you know, and it's, it's, I mean, would you class that kind of thing as where you're, you're having a, I was going <laughs> a cheeky wink with somebody. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. It's no. more of a the way that you. Chat. But, but again, in think... the Me Too era, is that wrong? But then, is that wrong to be flirty? But if you and... get it back as well. Well, yeah, but then, are you overstepping a mark there? And is there anything wrong being flirty? Oh, now we're questioning everything. Everything I am as a human is gone. <laughs> well, no, but that's that, that's what I'm saying. It, it makes you double think now, in regards to. The stuff that we, we you've done for granted for like mm. twenty years, where you 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 know have a have a, a, a it's it's hard to even talk yeah. about no because right, it I, makes I it sound like it's dirty. But you have a you know, a, a, a cheeky conversation with somebody that sort of like got double entendres and, and I wouldn't class uh, that as cheating though because if you're if you're, you're not being suggestive, aren't suggestive you? rather than cheating. Cheating is when you actually do something, is it not? Yeah, I suppose, but it's just it. It's it's a very strange world that we live in now. And then, if you're that sort of person that's very flirtatious, you will have always been very flirtatious. So if you get with the partner you're with, they should know what you're like. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, but Do I you think grow- it's, I think it's different when you're if you're dating somebody, or you're in the early throes of dating somebody and you're flirtatious, yeah. then it's sort of like it's the excitement. When you're actually then with somebody, I don't think that flirtatious you don't do you don't do that flirtatiousness with the person you're with. No, because you become comfortable yeah, and exactly. s- stable and with it's them. Like you're, and that's yeah, it. yeah, and you're not you're not preening yourself in front of them. Do you know what I mean? Well and you've done that stage. But that's it's what I'm all saying. stages, isn't yeah, it? So you've... so you don't naturally flirt with the person you're with mm. You might flirt with other people, but it doesn't. It's not a thing of saying that the flirting then goes into anything else. No, well, no, no. I, I, I will say I'm a flirtatious person. Absolutely. Oh, I you're am. a tart. Yeah. I will. All, no, because I, I think it, you know, it's a bit of cheeky fun, but not mm. anything. I wouldn't ever overstep the mark. You know, there's a different thing if you've got two consenting adults that want a bit of fun. Um, and then go off and have that fun. If it's going to hurt somebody, then you, in an ideal world, you've got to be man enough to try and do that and and, and address that. And I get it why people don't come man or woman because they don't want to hurt the person they're with. They've loved that person, so I understand it. 
I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a minefield, what, isn't it? What a very good question. Thank you very much, yeah, that is a great, for that. I, I mean, know we probably haven't answered it. From our perspective, I mean, cheating is wrong, but you always have to listen to the story behind it first before you go out and castrate them. Yeah, and I don't think... Um, I don't think it makes a difference whether it's a male perspective or a female perspective. No, nor me. It's I just think that if a male wants to cheat, they might have to work a little bit harder. The they're going to, aren't they? <laughs> and like I said, you can never stop somebody falling in love. That it's no, an emotion. It's... That it's gonna. Ha- if you meet that, yeah. Everybody so say has their soulmate, and if you meet that soulmate, and you might be with somebody else, and you fall in love, it's shit for that other person. I yeah. I get it. I've been the other side, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Years ago. But you shit, but you can't stop it. And it's not always irreparable either, is it? If, if You know, I think if your relationship's strong enough and one of you do stray off, I'm sure you can work on it and bring it back and, yeah. st- and survive a relationship. Yeah. I don't think that's the B end of it all. No, no. And no. as regards to the email, you know, what do you can, you know, all of that. I mean, what do we, what do we consider is cheating? How far in? Like you said... It, Flirting, I don't consider as cheating because if when I've been with people, I've been just the same flirtation in front of that person. Yeah, too. yeah. So I'm not doing it that there's something behind the back. Mm. Don't know. Don't know how far it is. Everybody's got a different perspective of what cheating is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, on that bombshell. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Judy. For, yes. uh, for the question. And thank you very much for your um, contribution to the competition. Indeed, indeed. If you want to uh, be like Judy, and why don't you be like Judy? Because she's wonderful. She is wonderful. Uh, and I don't mean that in a flirtatious <laughs> way uh, or in a sexist way. I just think it was wonderful. A great question. Uh, email us, pavoneal at hotmail.com. And, um, you know, we can answer your questions. We'd on, love to answer uh, your questions. Future future episode absolutely oh going back to saying that we're flirtatious people and huggy people we are also very huggy people. it's not just to the opposite sex we, we hug oh, yeah we hug everybody yeah it's not like we're just singling out women and we've always we've always done yeah. that i mean it's i'll give you a, a, a if we ever get anybody get any guests that come into our, our little studio mm. into the shed i think what i tend to do if it's somebody i've never met before i will shake their hand when we first meet yeah. them and then have a hug, hug the following, yeah, you know, when, when we say goodbye. And I, I think we've always, I think I've always done it like that. I don't know whether you, I'm quite huggy straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so it's just the way I've always been, and the reason I'm a huggy person, I actually know it makes me feel good. Yeah, a hug makes me feel good. Yeah, it just makes makes it lifts your spirits. Well, I don't well, know the way. Don't not, do that. Yeah, <laughs> the way. Uh, yeah. Oops. Not in any sort of sex. I don't find any sexual thing out of a hug. It's. I actually feel like my endorphins are raised and I feel happier. Right. And I think it's a great to spread that happiness and love around. I really am a hippie. You really at, are, um, yeah. At heart, I am. I wow. always admit it. I am. Peace and love, everyone. Peace, love, hope. Uh, don't not remind uh, me. That's, that's my Ringo star. Dickhead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> peace and love, yeah. dickhead. <laughs> peace and love, dickhead. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what this episode is gonna be called. Cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll it's, think it's, it's the Keith Harris. Yeah, they'll monkey. think it's the. <laughs> oh god! And I just put a picture up of Cuddles right there. There you go. Yeah. Well, we'll have to think on that one. Yeah. So, um, so that'll do. Yeah, absolutely. That'll do. I think we'll um, we'll play this uh, play this out. Wonderful music by Rob Johnson. You go to robjohnsonmusic.com if you want to uh, see and hear his stuff. He's new got singles some, yeah, and stuff coming out. Great music. Yeah. yeah. Go on to uh, the socials. Um, we're at Pavo and Neil, uh, and that'll do it for this week. Love it. <laughs>